First and foremost, I want to thank everybody for taking uh, your time today to spend a little bit of time with us and learn all there, there is to learn about uh, Heat Printing Success 101. I am Jennifer Johnson. I am one of the sales managers for Group Stall. Um, I have my colleague, Deborah. She is the one that's going to be manning the chats, helping to answer any questions that you guys might have as, as we go through this webinar. Um, and I say, let's make it interactive. So if something doesn't make sense to somebody or you have, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat box um, and we'll get to them and answer them as quickly as we possibly can. Um, you might hear Deborah's voice chime in every once in a while if she wants me to repeat a question and then answer it live here with all of you. Um, we will have um, a special offer at the end of this presentation. So for those of you that can stay on the entire time great if not this will be recorded and we will be um, posting this so you guys can always refer back to it anytime um, so let's go ahead and get started here so getting started with with heat printing really there are three things that you need to be successful in what we call heat print technology. And I'm gonna dive into each of these things as we get further into the slides here. Um, but first and foremost, you need artwork, right? You need something to be able to print or to make. Um, now, this can be vast, deep, and wide. You can have what we call a uh, high resolution vector artwork, or you could have something like a drawing on a napkin. And I'm sure there are quite a few of you out there that have had customers uh, come to you with drawings on a napkin or screenshots from a, from a Google search or a website, something like that. Not to worry, folks, we can cover the whole gamut. So we can accommodate and make almost any artwork into a heat transfer for you. Second thing that you need you need the heat transfer, right? You need something to be able to apply to your garment or your accessory, like a bag or a hat or shoes or basically anything soft goods, what we call textiles. Um, and then the third most important thing that you need is a professional grade heat press. And I, I put emphasis on the word professional. Um, you will find a ton of heat presses out there. Uh, everything from, you know, your, your Amazon, Etsy, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, little itty bitty kind of what we call craft heat press, uh, basically a step up from a home iron, all the way through a very industrial grade professional heat press and I can't stress enough the latter the professional element of the heat press um, we're gonna get into why it's important to have a professional heat press later on uh, through this um, presentation all right so let's dive into artwork there are a lot of different terminologies and it can be really overwhelming for people um, when you start to talk artwork. Um, there are a lot of different formats in which you can create artwork. There is what we call Corel Draw. That is a very common artwork platform. And for those of you that aren't familiar with what Corel Draw is, you can just do a quick Google search and you will learn all there is to know about Corel Draw. Another very common artwork software platform is what we call Adobe Illustrator or AI. So you can see dot AI there. Adobe Illustrator, a lot of Mac users, so Apple Mac users tend to work in Adobe Illustrator. A lot of users that own a PC might often work in Corel Draw. We accept both. Um, but really, the bottom line is you need or w want to create your artwork so that it's in vector format. And that is just V-E-C-T-O-R, vector format. Now, if you're dealing with a photograph, maybe you're doing a family reunion or, you know, a customer has come to you and wants a photograph, that 
usually cannot be created in vector. There are applications out there and software out there, software out there that can convert that, but typically those are in Photoshop fi type files or what we call PNG type files. We can absolutely accommodate those types of files as well. Um, and if by chance, your customer has a drawing on a napkin or something that they might have hand drawn and there's just, you're kind of scratching your head going, oh my gosh, how do I make this artwork even usable for somebody like Stalls or Transfer Express to create for me into a heat transfer? That's okay, you can submit that type of artwork to us. Typically we call it a uh, non-usable artwork. You are welcome to submit that to us. We have software behind the scenes that can convert that artwork for you into a usable format. Um, at our sister company, our screen printed transfer company, Transfer Express, we do not charge for those services. There are a lot of companies out there that charge artwork redraw services. We do not charge for that service. At Stalls, right now, it's a very minimal uh, fee. It's a $20 artwork redraw fee at Stalls. So no artwork uh, redraw fee at Transfer Express, small uh, fee at Stalls. One thing that is worth mentioning as we get into artwork, because we come across this a lot, customers always ask, well, can you produce those Mickey Mouse ears for me? Uh, can you produce this Fortnite logo for me or this Barbie logo for me? The answer is only if you have the license for it. So folks, one big word of advice, do not use copyright logos or images unless you hold the license for it. And for those of you that are curious, there is a website that my partner Deborah will post into the chat section that you can absolutely check out to see if the logo you're working with has any copyright infringement issues. And that's the USPTO.gov, US Patent and Trade Office.gov. It's a great website. I would dog ear it, star it, bookmark it, because you guys can always reference if a logo you're working with is copyright. Um, we will stop any artwork that is uploaded into our system, both at Stalls and at Transfer Express, if there are any copyright issues. Um, we do not reproduce copyright images, okay? Um, so, you know, let us know, let us know on that. Um, let's get to our next slide. That is kind of what you need to know in order to get some great artwork created. Now, for those of you that are not graphic artists and whose customers do not have any artwork, but you're really looking to create some really fun, cool items and apparel and accessories, we offer a ton of templated artwork ready to go. It's customizable. You can go in, select the templates, and then really truly make them your own and bring them to life. It's a great, great feature for you guys, both at stalls and at Transfer Express. And these are completely free um, software systems for you guys. They're, we do not charge for these services. There's no monthly premiums. They're completely free to you guys as long as you guys sign up for an account at stalls.com or transferexpress.com. So I'm gonna dive into a little bit um, of each of these. So the first one you see with the tigers, that is cadworkslive.com. And for those of you that can't see it clearly on the screen, Deborah can post a link to it in the chat box. This is our proprietary software, software system that has a bunch of templates. You can do everything from simple text to graphics to logos. Um, you, For those of you that are doing team sports and might have a roster of names and numbers, this is a great templated system to utilize. Um, the next is Stalls CAD Cut Templates, and you can find those on the Stalls website. Again, Deborah will post a link to how to create um, CAD Cut Templates on the Stalls website. 
And while she's doing that, I'm actually going to post a poll here. I'd love for you guys to answer this. How many of you utilize Stahl's custom logo services from us? And basically that's instead of creating your own logos on say a vinyl cutter or a, you know, roll in print cut system, you're actually utilizing our custom services through Stahl. So you send us artwork, we produce the transfer, we ship you the transfer ready to apply. Let's see here. So a lot of you right now on the webinar have never utilized our custom services. So I highly recommend you guys check it out. It's great. Uh, again, Deborah will post a link so you guys can check that out. She's also gonna post a blog um, all on all things raster artwork versus vector artwork. So you guys can get um, a little bit of information on usable artwork versus non-usable artwork and kind of how to create vector artwork. We've got a lot of blogs and things like that where we're, we're really helping to educate um, our customers. And she will should have put the link there to our templated artwork so you guys can see all of that. Great, then we move over to our sister company, Transfer Express. This is our, again, our custom screen printed transfer division. They are fantastic. We have worked long and hard to create our easy view online design tool. Again, completely free to you as a customer. All you need to do is register for an account at Transfer Express and she has posted the Transfer Express link there. Over a thousand templates to go in and customize and design and make your own. It is awesome. We have a ton of education at transferexpress.com on really how to utilize the EasyView online design tool and really make it your own. So I highly recommend you guys check out those blog posts and those education and, and all of the great webinars at Transfer Express. They're all recorded and, and easily easy to access, but that's another great way to create your own custom artwork. And then last but not least, stalls any word, any way templates. So really this gives you guys the opportunity to create, like in the sports uh, world, to create uh, sports team names with tails and you can do names and number combinations. We have a ton of fonts and sizes and colors available to you through the stalls any word, any way product category. And then obviously selecting from all of those templates is, is just a great option. I am going to launch another poll. How many of you have utilized Transfer Express's Easy View online design tool? Hey, Jennifer. Give, yeah. While uh, people are answering this question, the poll, um, we've had some people asking about how do you obtain the licenses to logos? Ah, that's a great question. So really what you need to do, it's going to boil down to whether it's maybe a collegiate license like a university or a college or a professional league like, I don't know, the NBA, MLB, you would reach out to those organizations directly. And typically most of those organizations' websites have a link or a tab to licensing, becoming a, a licensee for those organizations. Same would go for things like Disney or, um, you know, Hasbro, all those those major licensing. If you go to their website, there are typically uh, links on their website to inquiring about becoming a, a licensee for those. There's obviously fees involved. We are not involved in any of the licensing aspect for those organizations. You would reach out to them directly. So hopefully that answers that. So got the poll back. It looks like just about half of you have utilized Transfer Express's EasyView online design tool. For those of you that answered no, you have not, I highly recommend checking it out. There is nothing easier and better than a free artwork software tool for you guys. Um, again, no fees and it's just, I am not a graphic artist. I even have a very difficult time navigating CorelDRAW because that's just not the way my brain works. Um, and I can navigate the EasyView online design tool so easily. It's very intuitive and we've got, again, like I said, a lot of um, previous webinars that talk 
uh, or walk you through the details on, on how to do that successfully. So that's just a great um, option for you guys. The next thing that you need to to know or to be able to have on uh, you know in your tool belt is know when to select the right method. This is going to make for successful heat printing. It's not good enough to just go out and order any heat transfer product. You really need to be able to select the right heat transfer product for your fabric. We've got endless resources and tools both at stalls and at transfer express on how to select the right fabric for your needs so deborah is going to post something in the chat section that is that has to do with like fabric compatibility so it's a great handy little uh pdf that you guys um oh i'm sorry it's going to be in the offers that you guys can um i'm sorry Disregard that. It's going to be in the in the files section here. It's a fabric guide and it's great because it literally lists all the fabrics that you can potentially think of and then it marries our products to those fabrics. So it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it for you. So if you're dealing with a 50-50, uh, cotton poly blend or 100% cotton or maybe a nylon. You can literally go down the list and then it says which of our products are compatible with that fabric. It's really crucial to make sure that you're selecting the right product for the fabric that you're dealing with. And that goes for, you know, your basic heat transfer vinyl as well as your screen printed heat transfers out of Transfer Express and or your full color transfers at both stalls and Transfer Express. It's really important to make sure that you're picking the right fabric, you know, for your needs. So next up, we've got a what to use when cheat sheet here for you. It's kind of the number one question we get asked from customers is, oh my gosh, you have so many products on your website or in your catalog, we just don't know when to use what. So we've created this really simplified little cheat sheet for you guys. We've kind of broken it down. So the colored squares, if you will, are broken down into product category. The row across the top is the number of colors you would have in your design or designs. And then the column down on the left is how many you would potentially be ordering. Everything from one piece to 200 plus pieces. And then we break it down from there. And again, in the files section of the webinar, we have a PDF link to the what to use when grid. So you can download that PDF, save it to your documents, and you can easily refer back to it when, when needed. Um, and I'm not gonna dive into this. I did another webinar last week on what to use when. So I, I highly recommend if you guys wanna learn a little bit more on the what to use when and, and all the different fabrics and the different product types, check out that webinar. It's a, it's a great webinar to really dive into the details on that. Hey, Jennifer, can I interrupt you for one second to answer sure. some questions? Um, Leo's asking the difference between stalls and Transfer Express. That is a great trust question, Leo. So stalls is all things vinyl. So we produce and sell heat transfer vinyl by the yard and by the roll for you to be able to cut yourself on a, on a cutter, either whether that's a craft and hobby cutter like a Silhouette or a Cricut or a, an industrial grade cutter like a, a Roland or a GravTech. We also produce full color digital transfers out of stalls. We sell Hotronics heat press equipment out of stalls and we sell dimensional logos out of stalls like our flex style, embroidered patches, leather patches, um, all sorts of great things out of stalls. Transfer Express is our sister company and that is all things custom screen printed heat transfers. So think direct screen printing onto your fabric, instead of directly screen printing onto your fabric, you can order heat transfers where we directly screen print onto a carrier sheet that you then heat press onto your fabric using an industrial grade heat press. And the beautiful thing people ask, well, why? Why would I do heat transfers over direct screen printing? 
The reason why is the versatility. You don't have to order all these sizes and all these color ranges and all these fabrics and have them screen printed. You might not sell through all of those. You can just order heat transfers and make your garments as you need them. So it makes it really versatile and easy when you do it as screen printed heat transfers. Any other questions, Deborah, that I can help answer? Yeah. What um, What is a digital transfer? Okay, so a digital transfer is typically a product that is produced or printed on an eco-solvent printer. Um, and it typically ac can accommodate full color images. It's great for when you've got three or more colors in your logo. Um, it can accommodate blends, gradients, photographic quality images. It's a really unique printing process. Now you absolutely do not have to own an eco-solvent printer. They can get quite expensive. They start typically in the in the twelve to thirteen thousand dollar range and go up from there. So the great thing about that is you can submit your full color logo to us at Stalls and we can produce the logo for you or the heat transfer for you, ready to apply. It comes in a box, you take it out, and it's ready to apply to your uh, garment. All right, one more question. Are there any setup fees or minimum quantity for Transfer Express? There are minimum quantities at Transfer Express. We produce everything at Transfer Express in sheet format. We don't sell by the piece or by the transfer at Transfer Express. We sell in sheets. Typically, there's a few sheet sizes that we offer at Transfer Express, so I definitely think you guys should check out that website, um, but it's a five sheet minimum. So it's, it's fill up the real estate, put as many logos as you can on that sheet, and you're going to order five of the same sheet. And then we have price breaks from there as the volume gets higher and higher. But other than that, there are no other setup fees at Transfer Express. All right, one more question. Is sublimation <laughs> printing digital? Um, I'm not going to dive too far down the rabbit hole on sublimation printing. Um, but it's it's a type of gas. So it is digitally printed onto a, a carrier, um, but when it's heated up past a certain temperature, there's gases that release from the ink. It's not an eco-solvent ink, it's a different type of ink, it's sublimation ink. Um, and the gases release and then they absorb into the fabric. So that is basically what sublimation printing is in a nutshell. All right. I can move along and we can we can do more questions as we go here. Um, but the next thing that you need for successful heat printing is selecting the right fabric. And basically what that means is making sure that you're marrying the right fabric to the right heat transfer. A lot of frustration or troubleshooting questions that we get in, in our customer service department is, oh, my transfer isn't adhering to my fabric, or oh, I'm burning my fabric, or I'm scorching my fabric. We oftentimes do a lot of troubleshooting with that. And typically, once we ask a, a lot of questions, we can get to a root cause of, the customer has not selected the right transfer product for the fabric that they're using. And that might mean they've selected a transfer that applies at too high of a heat, too high of a temperature for the fabric that they're using, so they're burning the fabric. Or they've selected maybe a transfer type that won't adhere to a particular fabric that they're using. If maybe it's a coated fabric or a fabric that has nylon in it, something a little unusual like that. So again, it's really important that you make sure you're selecting the right heat transfer type for the fabric that you're using for the your given project or program. That's really, really Im important. All right, next up, application tips and tricks. This is when I'm going to kind of dive into the importance of an industrial heat press. As I mentioned before, there are a ton of heat presses out on the market. You will see everything from, gosh, I've seen heat presses in the $100 range or $200 range. 
I can't express enough. Uh, this is really where that old adage applies. You get what you pay for. Yes, they are very enticing because they are really budget friendly. Typically, those types of presses are what we call import key presses. They are not uh, made in the USA. Um, they are typically made of less expensive materials and components, so they don't last as long. And the three most important elements to a good, solid, long-lasting heat transfer are time, temperature, and pressure. You have to have the right recipe of time, temperature, and pressure to get a long-lasting, durable look and finish that will withstand multiple washing and dry and wear and tear. And in order to, to have that, you obviously need to make sure your fabric is compatible with your heat transfer type. You obviously need to make sure that you're applying that heat transfer at the right time, temperature, and pressure. But then you need to make sure that you have a good, solid, good quality heat press that's going to have consistent temperature throughout all of your applications, consistent pressure throughout the entire heat press, and that it's going to have good, solid, even time. Um, we actually manufacture and sell the Hotronics brand of heat press equipment, which you see photographed here. This is one of our best-selling heat presses. It's our Hotronics Autoclam. Deborah will post a link directly to our heat uh, press equipment for those of you that want to learn more, educate yourselves on, you know, a good quality uh, heat press. We are American-made. Um, another, a few other tips and tricks to really successful heat decorating. Um, we have a ton of placement resources. That's another question that we get asked a lot is, how do I know I'm centering my heat transfer uh, correctly? Or I know I, I have it in the right place. So in the files section, there is a design size and placement that Deborah is going to share. It's, this is a great PDF to reference back to. So you know, okay, I'm applying this on my youth uh, t-shirt properly or on my adult jersey properly. This is a great tool to reference back to to make sure that you uh, get the correct placement. We also have a lot of other resources available. We have a laser alignment system that you can use that allows you to evenly uh, line up specifically like names and numbers on sports jerseys. It's a handy little tool. It's also great for doing left chest. A lot of uh, newer decorators struggle with left chest placement because it can be a little bit tricky. Uh, things like that. So that those are some great resources as well. Hey, Jennifer, let me interrupt you for one yep. second. We do have yep. some questions in regard to placement. Yeah. I don't know if you can expand on it a little bit, but Dina says, I struggle with vinyl embroidery placement and pricing. Can you recommend? Absolutely. Um, Deborah. I don't know if you have easy access to it right now, but if you don't, I think we can probably email everybody on this webinar after the fact, uh, our ultimate cost calculator. So we mm -hmm. have spent a lot of time to putting together a wonderful cost calculator just for people like you, Dina, that really struggle with how to price out heat transfers. Um, so we factor in a lot of variables into this co cost calculator, and then it spits out a recommended sell price for you based on the product that you're using, things like that. So it's a really handy little tool. We also have a video that goes along with that cost calculator that kind of helps walk you through it. So Deborah will either share that with you guys here. If she can't, then we'll absolutely email that to all of you folks so that you can um, kind of look through that. In terms of the embroidery placement, I won't speak too much to the embroidery placement, but that design uh, PDF, that design placement PDF that uh, Deborah shared, that is a great resource on all things vinyl placement, uh, digital heat transfer placement, screen printed transfer placement. So um, any other questions, Deborah, on that? Yeah, there's one more from Garvey. Is there a template for placement when applying the image on a garment? Um, we don't have specific templates per se, but check out the laser alignment tool. It's a great tool because that will shine a template with little laser red lines. That will shine a template for you. We have um, some 
placement guides and placement wizards. They're like a, kind of like a cardboard piece that can really help you line up like a name and a number. Um, oftentimes, a lot of people like to make an arch in their name and number on sports apparel jerseys. So it really helps with that type of thing. So you guys can check that out as well. I don't know, Deborah, if you can post a link to that. Um, that really helps as well. And then obviously refer back to, as I mentioned, the design size and placement guide that uh, Deborah shared, the PDF. That's a really great little tool for all things placement. Any other questions? I think we're up to date right now. Okay, perfect. Um, so some other tips and tricks for successful heat printing. Use a cover sheet at stalls. We have um, a few different cover sheets. We've got craft paper, which is my absolute favorite. I love the craft paper. Deborah, if you can post a link to um, our, our uh, tools and accessories landing page at stalls. We also sell a non-stick cover sheet. It's very similar to a Teflon cover sheet. Uh, we're not allowed to use the term Teflon because <laughs> it's it's copyright, but um, it's very similar to that. And those are some great tools for helping to prevent burning or scorching. Uh, a lot of people call them platen marks or plate marks, box marks. There's a lot of different terminology for very similar results. So make sure you guys have cover sheets in your arsenal. One thing worth mentioning for those of you that do currently utilize both stalls and Transfer Express products, we do not recommend cover sheets for most of Transfer Express products because they already come built in with their cover sheet. Um, so please make sure that you're reading the instructions that come in the box with all of your Transfer Express orders. We do not recommend cover sheets with most of our Transfer Express products, okay? So just make sure you're following those instructions there. But on the stall side with all of our products, we recommend cover sheets. Thermotape is your friend. For those of you that don't know what Thermotape is, it is a special heat resistant tape that will not melt or leave a residue on your fabric. It's great for, uh, you know, left chest logos. You don't want that little left chest logo to, to shift once you've placed it down so gently. You can use some thermo tape to hold it into place. Let's say you're doing uh, single letters. You order our die cut single letters, which is a very popular product for us at stalls. And you wanna make the word Johnson on the back of a shirt. Well, you've gotta line up each little letter. You can use some thermo tape to hold all those letters into place onto your garment and then press. It won't leave any nasty residue or film or anything on your apparel. It's a great, tool to have in your arsenal. So Deborah, again, um, she will post a link to all of these accessories uh, in the chat box. Um, extras. We always tell customers, order a few extras, especially if you're newer to heat printing. I still do this and I've been heat printing for years and years and years and years. I will be going too fast, juggling too many things, trying to multitask, and oops, I've applied something upside down. Or I've applied, you know, the wrong color to the wrong garment. It's always best to have extras. Our products last on the shelf for up to a year, as long as you're storing them in a cool, dry environment. So we say, you know, not too hot, not too cold. I always tell people a little tool that we don't advertise very much, but it's a great little trick. Uh, get yourself some cheap Ziploc bags from, I don't know, Walmart or Amazon, and you can store your extra transfers in there. Just squeeze out all the air, zip them closed, and there you go, throw them up on the shelf. They take up very, very little room. That is one of the glorious things about heat transfers is not only are they really versatile and all of the things you can decorate, you know, bags, hats, shoes, leggings, purses, um, they're very inexpensive and they're really easy to store. They don't take up a lot of room like extra thread for embroidery or extra ink buckets for direct screen printing. So that's one of the great things about um, uh, heat transfers. Um, 
how many of you guys are using, I'm gonna launch a quick poll, how many of you guys are using accessories like uh, you know, cover sheets or I haven't even talked about pillows yet. Uh, there are heat printing pillows that you can put inside of your garment in between the garment and the bottom platen to help soften when you're dealing with things like zippers and buttons and seams. So how many of you guys are, are utilizing these types of accessories? Great, that's what I like to see. So, so far we're, we're at about 70% uh, of you. So for those of 30% of you that are not utilizing these types of accessories and tools, I highly recommend you check them out. We have tons of videos on how to successfully utilize these tools. And they're really just that. They're, they're a tool in your toolbox to, to help set you up for heat printing success. So really check those out. Hey, Jennifer, we have a couple questions in regards to cover sheets. Yep. So do you have a recommendation on what type of cover sheet you use for each type of transfer? Um, so, you know, that that can depend. Uh, I, I think sometimes it boils down to a personal preference. I really like craft paper for a few reasons. Craft paper is not coated like a Teflon cover sheet or our non-stick cover sheet. So it doesn't, it tends to not leave a sheen or discolor any of my polyester fabric. So I really, really like craft paper. Um, if I'm decorating, decorating a lot of t-shirts or garments in a row, let's say I get an order for a hundred, um, my non-stick cover sheet can often get very, very hot after, you know, the 10th garment or so. And I, I oftentimes will burn my fingers and it really annoys me. <laughs> so I like craft paper. Craft paper doesn't tend to get quite as hot. Um, and I just like craft paper. It's a really universal, great, um, product to have in my toolbox and we sell it by the pack and it's cheap. Um, but Teflon is great if you're doing a lot of sublimation transfers because you can kind of just wipe the Teflon off because it's so heavily coated. Um, so, you know, that's, that's really great as well. But in terms of, you know, boiling it down to a particular product, no, craft paper or your nonstick cover sheet will work across almost all of our products. Again, with that little caveat of be careful with the Transfer Express products. And then how long would you say a cover sheet would last, specifically the craft? That is a great question. So I tell people it should, you should be able to get hundreds, if not thousands of uses out of the same craft paper, sheet of craft paper. You know you'll need to toss it and get a new one. It After it really turns brown, <laughs> after so many uses, it will start to kind of, kind of start to really turn dark brown, almost burnt. Or if you're dealing with a sublimated garment, it can, the sublimated garment can sublimate onto the craft paper and you do not want to then re-sublimate that onto your next garment. So you'll have to toss that craft paper. Or last thing, if you're dealing with a heavily over dyed fabric, the dyes from the fabric sometimes want to transfer onto the craft paper and you'll see it. You'll see it brown, black, red, and you know you've got to toss that craft paper because you don't want that to get onto your next heat press, your next garment. And then we have just a couple of people asking if parchment paper and butcher paper work. So I get that question asked a lot. I my blanket answer is no, they're not going to work as well as the craft, pa craft paper. The craft paper is a thicker micron, meaning it's it's thicker than butcher paper, um, and it's got a wax coating on it. Now, butcher paper can have a wax coating on it, but they tend to be really, really thin. Um, so they don't work as well as craft paper in my personal experience. But I do have some customers because butcher paper is really, really cheap and you can buy it by the roll um, that use it and they say they have great success. My personal um, experience is I like craft paper better. Well, I'm gonna leave this time open for, for q and I do see one on here, Deborah, that says, are there any general tips on maintaining your heat press? Absolutely. That is a great question, Janet. So um, heat presses are just like cars. They need servicing, they need maintenance, they need calibration every once in a while. So on the daily, um, at, at the end of, of every shift or every day, 
wipe down your heat press. Sometimes you can get, especially if you're in a, in a shop and you've got other decorating methods in your shop, like embroidery or direct screen printing, where, you know, little threads or dust is getting in the air, ink is all over the place. Wipe your heat press down, make sure it's clean and not dusty. Um, if you know you're not going to be using your heat press for any length of time, cover it with a sheet, you know, protect it. It's, it's a, it's a, you know, if you're buying a Hotronics heat press, you're, you're looking at a, you know, at least probably a thousand dollar, if not more investment. Uh, so protect it, cover it with a, a little sheet and keep it nice and clean. Do not, if I can give you any other advice on this webinar, do not over pressurize your heat presses. I walk into a lot of shops and a lot of homes where people think the more pressure, the better. And on our heat presses, you will see something called OL in the pressure readout on our Hotronics line of heat presses. That means overload. You do not want to see that on your heat presses. Do not over pressurize your heat presses. Um, if the product is not sticking, you know, a knee jerk reaction is to just turn up the pressure. I would stop, call stalls or transfer express, depending on the product or wherever you got the product from and troubleshoot with them first before you turn up the pressure because you really wear on the mechanics of the machine when you over pressurize it. It's like riding your brakes in a car. You're gonna wear out your brakes a lot quicker if you're constantly over utilizing them. So don't over pressurize your machines. Um, and then making sure you guys are checking your temperature every once in a while. We do sell temperature strips. They're great. Deborah, I don't know if you have easy access to the link on our temperature strips. If not, we can email that link to you guys. Um, but I always tell people, get yourselves a cheap little heat gun from Home Depot. You can order them on Amazon and make sure that you're testing the temperature of your upper heating element in five spots, the middle, and all four corners and make sure that the temperature that's reading on your on your gauge is actually the temperature that's giving off. Um, so that's really important, making sure that your temperature is, is keeping up. Another thing, if you can avoid it, do not plug your heat presses into an extension cord. Make sure that you're plug plugging them into a dedicated circuit. That will make sure that all of the juice, all of the power, all of the temperature is really driving to your heat press. So those are just a few maintenance things that you guys can do uh, with your heat presses. Um, I see another one here. Are you filling orders with all of the COVID-19 issues? Vicki, absolutely. We are here to help you guys get through these times. We are open and taking orders both at stalls and at Transfer Express. Um, now, the only thing I can say is bear with us. We are running slightly lighter uh, staff in our customer service departments. So, you know, if you call in and, and you have to wait a little bit longer, just please be patient. We will get to your calls. Um, might just take us a, a few extra minutes. Any other questions? We have some questions coming in. Okay. So we have multiple people ask what the best cleaning agent is for wiping the platen. Um, if you could let them know on that. Sure, absolutely. So the best thing to do if you guys accidentally, and I have done it numerous times, accidentally apply a heat transfer upside down and you get all that gunk and that ink uh, on the upper heating element, don't panic. Just turn off your heat press, start to let it cool down. You want to be able to touch it with a cloth where it's nice and warm, but not hot that you're going to burn yourself. Take a little bit of water on a cotton cloth and just gently rub it out. If it's still not coming out, very mild dish soap, Dawn, Dove, nothing with bleach in it, nothing um, with abrasive chemicals in it, just light dish soap will, will gently work out all that ink and that gunk on there. Uh, do not scrape your upper heating element. It's Teflon. So just like your pots and pans, if you scrape it with a, a knife or a, some sort of chisel or, or something, you're going to scrape the Teflon off that coating and you're going to you're going to be in a world of, of pain there. So, you know, don't even use your fingernail, just a gentle fabric cloth of some sort should get that stuff right off. Okay, we've got a question on the uh, Hatronix Fusion with the platen that slides out. Mm -hmm. um, he's, Alan is asking, 
does the slide platen need to be pushed pushed all the way in when pressing? For example, wanting to leave the collar off the platen instead of draping off the edge. Okay, so yes, on our Fusion IQ with the drawer feature, when you go to push it in, that last little like less than half inch, you're gonna hear it kind of almost click into place. You wanna make sure it is clicked into place because again, you don't wanna heat press when it's still slightly pulled out. It could get your machine out of alignment with the bearings and the castings. You you wanna make sure it's, it's locked in there into place. And then you just slightly pull your collar off the platen so that your collar is hanging off. Um, if for some reason you can't do that, you definitely need to look into interchangeable platens for your Fusion, and I did not touch on that in this webinar. I'm teaching or I'm hosting another webinar next Monday for those of you that are interested on all things Heat Press 101, and we're gonna go over interchangeable platens. All of our Hotronics uh, line of heat presses have interchangeable platens, so you can drop in smaller size platens for smaller size garments. Okay, more questions here. Yeah, what I'm, I'm here, you guys. <laughs> what is the standard pressure for low, medium, and high pressure? That's a great question. I see that coming from Claire. So for those of you that do not have a Hotronics brand of heat press, oftentimes you will not have a digital readout on your on your press. It's it's what I call a feel. It's usually a dial that lefty loosey, righty tidy, tidy, and you dial it. You know, for for higher pressure or dial it back for lower pressure. Unfortunately, that is going to be a feel and you're just gonna have to get to know what is light, medium, or firm pressure. I always tell people light pressure, a really weak person should be able to engage and disengage a press at light pressure. Medium pressure, you wanna feel that give when you go to lock that press into place. Firm pressure should be you got to work to to get that press locked into place. Again, the great thing about the Hotronics line of presses is we have a digital readout on our all of our Hotronics presses. So we tell customers a one to ten pressure gauge on all of our products. One being the lightest, ten being you can't even get the press engaged. Most of our products we recommend between a six and an eight on the pressure. Um, and again, when everything is locked into place on our Hotronics line of presses, there is a little pressure readout that tells you, you are at a four, or you are at a five, or you are at a six. So it takes all of that guesswork out of it for you. It's it's a great feature on the Hotronics line of presses. All right, and Effie has a question about heat presses and do they come adjusted to the correct pressure? Effie, they do not. That is a big misnomer that people think that, oh, I pull my heat press out of the box and it's just, calibrated to the right pressure. It is not. Nine times out of 10, most presses from the little cheapy import presses all the way up to, you know, a good solid industrial heat press are gonna have some sort of pressure dial. It's usually a dial that you have to turn on a manual heat press. On the air models or our automatic models, it's all driven by air, compressed air. But on the manual models, it's a dial that you have to turn. Um, and then if it's not a Hotronics heat press, it becomes a feel. Like I mentioned, you're gonna feel what is firm, light, or medium. Um, on the Hotronics, the guesswork is is taken out of it and it's, it's a readout for you. Um, but you guys will know a tall tale sign that you're not using the right pressure is either the transfer will literally fall off, you can get your nail under there and literally peel it right back. You know, okay, I've not used enough enough pressure on this or enough heat on this or enough time or you know you'll you've used too much pressure when the transfer almost looks smashed and the fibers are coming through the transfer oftentimes that's a sign that you've used too much pressure all right thank you jennifer yeah um, we have dean's asking about what you recommend for printing on cloth mats CAD cut oh. versus heat transfers versus embroidery. 
Oh, that's a great question, Dean. Thank you so much for bringing that up. By the way, everybody, stay tuned because we are going to be selling masks. I believe, Deborah, you can correct me if I'm wrong, we're going to go live next week. We are going to be um, helping to distribute for uh, Sanmar masks, uh, but with slightly lower quantity minimums than what Sanmar is currently offering. So stay tuned for that. And I believe we have a slightly more premium mask that we're going to be offering as well. But the big question that we're getting from people is, hey, how do I decorate these masks? And to answer your question, Dean, you can decorate them with anything. Pretty much any of our products at Stalls or Transfer Express would work beautifully on these masks. Most of the masks are um, cotton, cotton poly blend polyester, like performance polyester. Um, and all of those will take heat transfer vinyl beautifully, screen printed transfers beautifully, or our full color digital transfers beautifully. The only masks that you want to be really careful of are like the 3M masks um, that have the filters built into them or that are like more like polypropylene type. Just be very careful with those. They tend to have metal accessories and clippings and you know, are a little bit more sensitive to the heat, but just a standard cloth mask, you would be fine with, with any of those things that I suggested. All right, Jennifer, uh, Grace is asking, what stalls heat press do you recommend as a starter? Oh, that's a great question. And Grace, I highly recommend you check out our webinar next Monday that I'm going to be hosting on all things uh, Hotronics heat presses. But to answer your question here, you know, it really is going to boil down to your budget, number one and the amount of space you have. So we have got an auto clam, a Hotronics auto clam, which was featured in this picture right here. Um, that is the most uh, space saving heat press. It fits beautifully on a little table. Um, it's a 16 by 20 footprint. It automatically releases, meaning you pull it down to, to engage it to seal it and then it counts down for you. It's got an auto timer built into it. And then when it's done counting down, it goes beep, 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 and it pops open automatically. So it's great if you're multitasking, a lot of us are home with our kids. If your kids are knocking at your door or the phone is ringing, this is a fantastic heat press for you. Um, it retails for 1,000. 625 but we've got some great package deals that we're offering right now um, and then my second favorite heat press is our fusion iq which a former person asked a question on the drawer on that the great thing about the fusion iq is it's got a swing away feature and a drawer feature slightly higher in price and needs a, a slightly larger footprint but it has a few additional bells and whistles so check out the webinar next monday um, or you can email me after this for all of you guys that might want to email me some private questions my email address is jennifer j-e-n-n-i-f-e-r dot johnson j-o-h-n-s-o-n at stalls.com. You are welcome to email me any questions there. Deborah posted it in the chat box. Um, any other questions? We do. We've got one from Jake. What's the best way to store apparel inventory? Ooh, Jake, that's a tricky question because it's really going to boil down to the amount of space that you have. Um, but I would say, you know, as long as you're, again, in a cool, dry environment, whether it's in your home or in your shop, as long as it's not excessively hot or excessively cold or humid or wet, uh, you know, I get those little like uh, storage cubes. They almost look like milk crates and you can kind of tip them up on, on their side and you can fold up all your garments and put them in there and stack them floor to ceiling. That's a great way. So they're not just sitting in boxes that you don't know or get those clear bins from, you know, Walmart, Amazon, Target. You can label them, which, you know, with with the color, the size, those are great because they're stackable. I think anything that's stackable is, is great and clear so you can see what's in it is, is a great, uh, great option. So another question we have, Jennifer is from Claire. She sent a private message, but I think it's an important one for everyone. Um, we have one of the, the smaller 10 by 10 platens and when we press items on it using 70 PSI, we see a box outer rim of the platen. How do we avoid this? The rubber is set inside of the metal, metal outer rim. 
That is a great question, Claire. Thank you for posting that. So there are a lot of people that aren't aware of this little trick. Um, it is posted in most of our marketing material, but it just kind of gets lost in things. So I think this is really worth mentioning. When you drop in smaller platens like a, a 10 by 10, and now I'm basing this on a 16 by 20 upper platen. So I don't know if your top platen is also a 10 by 10, but if you're dealing with a 16 by 20 upper platen, then you drop in smaller interchangeable platens on the bottom. You have to adjust the pressure. I always tell people take the pressure down because you're driving all of that PSI uh, pounds per square inch now into a smaller space. So you don't need to be at 70 PSI. I would take that down. I would take that down to probably, gosh, even maybe 40 PSI. Start at 40 PSI. A great little trick you can do to see if you're going to get box marks is take the corner of your garment, just like a little lower corner piece of your garment, and just place it on the corner of your platen at the time, temperature, pressure that you would apply a transfer and just press that little corner, okay? For let's say it's for 15 seconds and you're you're at your temperature and you're at your pressure. And then once everything is done, you will see if that little corner gets a really bad press mark or a box mark. If it does, you know that is that temperature is too high, the pressure is too high and the, and the time is too long for that particular fabric. So Claire, I would start by taking down the pressure. If the transfer doesn't stick because you've taken the pressure down, I would suggest a different transfer type for that heat sensitive material. Okay, we've got two more questions to get to. One is the difference between sublimation images compared to heat transfers. Okay, so I'm not going to dive down the rabbit hole of sublimation. That's a whole nother webinar that we could get into. But basically, sublimation is a type of printing that is a gas. And when it is heated to a certain temperature, the gases in the ink release and basically sublimate or, or transmit into the fibers of the fabric. So it, sublimation is only used on 100% poly and typically only on 100% white polyester. Now there's other there's people out there that can argue otherwise and I'm not going to use this platform to do that but uh, as a general rule of thumb it's 100% white polyester so you're a little bit limited in terms of what you can sublimate um, and it doesn't feel like anything because it literally the ink becomes part of the fibers of the polyester. Heat transfer vinyl is actually a material that transfers onto the fabric and, and for lack of a better words, sits on top of the fabric with industrial grade adhesives to make them withstand numerous washings um, and dries. So those are two different technologies. Sublimation is, is an ink that sublimates into the fabric of, of into the fibers of the fabric. Heat transfers are heat transfer on top of the fabric. Um, heat transfers typically can accommodate a much wider range of fabrics from cotton to nylon to spandex to lycra and everything in between, whereas sublimation is, is a little bit more limited. Okay, and our last question is from Aaron. He's talking about his, his comments or question is, I host hockey tournaments and offer on-site apparel selections for parents to custom order hoodies and t-shirts. More and more parents are asking for something other than 50-50 cotton. They want something more Under Armour. Great. What, what transfer do you recommend for this type of material? Uh, and Aaron, I'm going to assume, Deborah, did I, did I understand that correctly, that he's actually doing it at the event? Meaning like he's yeah. actually, okay, okay. Yeah. That is, Aaron, that is a great question. So if you're doing single color logos, like let's just say you're customizing names and numbers, um, Premium Plus is a great heat transfer vinyl to do at events. It applies at a nice low temperature, so it's great for Under Armour, Nike, it's actually what we sell to the large brands, um, Adidas, because it applies at a nice low temperature, it won't scorch, so you can do it on performance polyester. It's beautiful, it's buttery, soft, has high stretch and rebound, comes in, yo gosh, 40 or so colors, so it's a great option for single color stuff. Um, if you're doing multiple color logos, uh, I would highly recommend looking at Transfer Express, 
looking at their Elasti print, and that is E L A S T I, Elasti print. And maybe Deborah can post a link to the Elasti print because, again, it also applies at a nice low temperature for those performance polyesters like Under Armour, Adidas, Nike, New Balance. Um, and that's a great option, and that you can do multiple colors in one image. Um, another great option if you're doing full color, if there's a, graphics with a lot of colors in them, or maybe you've got a logo for an event that's uh, 20 colors or something, check out our Stretch Litho Mat. Also applies at a really nice low temperature for those heat sensitive uh, polyesters. And that's also out of Transfer Express. Um, all of the products that I just mentioned will apply at about 275, 280. Um, so that's a really ideal temperature for those heat sensitive fabrics. All right, I think we're all set with questions. Great. Well, everybody, I thank you guys so much for joining me today. Please check out more of our webinars. Um, the one next Monday on all things Hotronics Heat Press 101 success. And you're welcome to email me if you guys have any questions that you want to ask me privately, jennifer.johnson at stalls.com. I hope everybody um, stays safe and healthy. Thanks so much.